be on the wave of the future, getting rich in the process, or you're going to watch it flash by as this pandemic fast tracks the revolution that is e-commerce and advertising. And I'm going to explain to you why I think Facebook should be at the top of your list. So ladies, gentlemen, I look so forward to breaking this down for you. So let's jump right in this. Drop it. to the tech giant war for the forefront of e-commerce and advertising and why I think Facebook is poised to win this game. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to catch wind of this now as the pandemic fast tracks the revolution of the online digital realm. Now, who is competing in this war? Obviously against Facebook, we have Amazon, which is trying to move more away from e-commerce into advertising, whereas Facebook is trying to move away from advertising more into e-commerce. We got Google up there that's very well diversified, even have having exposure to SpaceX. And then finally, the last big giant is Shopify that just became one of Canada's largest companies. Every single one of these are competing in the same front. Each one has their own edge over the other one with Google and Facebook currently dominating the AdSense realm. And then with Shopify and Amazon just dominating the e-commerce and website realm. But why would I choose Facebook over all these other ones? Well, first of all, Shopify is trading at an absurd multiple. I mean, it doesn't even have a positive PE. Google, on the other hand, is an incredible company. And the only reason I didn't choose this over Facebook is I make money off Google AdSense. And I feel like if I'm already divulged in the business, that is my exposure to Google. So if I lose that part of my business, I also don't have to lose share value in this stock. Now, Amazon is in its own realm, trading at an absurdly high PE. And we all know what this growth stock is capable of. But if we had to compare it to Facebook, I would choose Facebook any day over the week. Yes, the PE is a little bit high, but when we get into the balance sheet, I'm sure you're going to start figuring out why that is. Now, if we were to compare these giants by size, Facebook sits at a $668 billion market cap. We got Amazon here at $1.2 trillion. We got Google at $600 or $959 billion. And then finally, Shopify at $86 billion. I am just going to wipe Shopify right off the list. It is a growth company, but it is trading at an absurdly high multiple for its level. And I want to primarily focus on the three big giants here ladies and gents. The other thing Facebook has going for them over these two giants, if you're looking for capital return, is the law of large numbers. What do I mean by this? Well, just think of it this way, guys. If Amazon and Google are worth a trillion dollars, that means for you to double your initial investment, it has to become worth two trillion dollars, which is a heck of a lot harder than it is for Facebook to grow into a trillion dollar valuation, doubling your money. But let's get into the balance sheet, some of the news articles, and kind of give you my bold thesis on why I'm so gung-ho for Facebook. Well, let's start by taking a look at that cast position, ladies and gents. They're sitting on $54.8 billion in cash. You have to realize that even if their platforms go belly up tomorrow, that cash can literally buy them into like multitudes of new companies. In fact, I mean, Facebook just bought Jiffy, which I think was an incredible buy, but it was worth $400 million. That is what they paid for Jiffy. And you think that would be a huge chunk of capital to Facebook, but it isn't even a drop in their billions of dollars pond here. So let's take a look at their assets first liabilities. Uh, Facebook currently sitting on $133 billion in assets, minusing the liabilities of $32 billion. They're sitting on a $100 billion underlying valuation, which essentially means if they're worth $600 billion today, that means that they are trading at six times their underlying asset values. And arguably, Facebook is one of the best growing stocks, not only by revenue, but by underlying margins. They're clicking growth that by about 20, 30% a year, arguably being the best balance sheet amongst the S&P top 10 companies. Now, if you've never really heard of Facebook, you've been living under a rock, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously it goes well beyond Facebook. They own Messenger, the uh, the Facebook Messenger. They got WhatsApp. They got Instagram, Oculus, uh, Whale, AUX, a bunch of other companies I've never heard of before, and even throwing Jiffy in there. They are way more diversified than I think people are aware of, but I want to get deep down into their actual balance sheet and fundamentals to show you the growth projection they are currently on. The greatest and worst thing for Facebook is they aren't doing any dividends, and they're definitely not doing any share buybacks, which we can see here, ladies and gents. So, I mean, if you're buying into something like an Apple, maybe a Microsoft, it's pretty expected that they're going to be buying some shares off the table, which automatically give value to you 
you as a shareholder because it looks makes their earnings per share look a lot better. And obviously taking more shares off the table makes your pie that much bigger. So Facebook is not going to give you those benefits. But I think for the future growth rate that they're having, uh, you don't need to worry about that. So here we can see the growth in the monthly active users over the daily. And we can see for again, December 31st at the year end, they were looking at about 2.4 billion active users, if I'm saying that correctly. And again, we can see Asia Pacific also having some of the best growth rate along with the rest of the world. US and Canada have finally started slowing down with Europe and growth, but man, Facebook is not slowing down by any means. One of the biggest arguments amongst the investing community on Facebook is the fact that from past growth, their user base has actually been slowing down. But I don't think that's an intelligent way of looking at it because they are still experiencing some pretty absurd user growth. But the reality is it's like the Coca-Cola of the advertising world, ladies and gentlemen. It is also the cheapest place to run ads still today. So, I mean, all they have to do with these, you know, billion plus users a day is raise the ad price by one cent. And I mean, could you imagine what that is going to do for their bottom line? You are buying into so much more than a slowing growth rate amongst users. And you also have to imagine on a multi-billion user platform, it is not as easy to grow at a fast rate than it was going from a thousand users to 10,000 users. Keep that in mind. It's the same thing with the law of large numbers when it comes to those market caps. But I want to read you a funny little article here um, that I just thought was pretty amusing between the rivals that are heating up uh, with Facebook and Amazon that could lead to a power struggle between these social uh, networking giants and the e-commerce titan over everything from ad sales to where consumers shop online. The latest salvo came on Tuesday when Facebook announced its newest venture into the e-commerce realm with the launch of Facebook Shops storefront available now. Facebook Shops lets retailers set up their own e-commerce portals that are accessible for their existing Facebook profiles. And just as Facebook is leaning more into e-commerce, Amazon is digging deeper into the online advertising market. In the company's most recent quarter, Amazon, other business segment, which is made up largely of its advertising division, saw a 44% year-over-year growth, topping out at $3.9 billion. That is still a far, far cry from Facebook's Q1 2020 advertising revenues of $17.4 billion, but Amazon's year-over-year -year advertising growth has been around 40% for the past five quarters, according to the report of the e -make, of the e marketer the company currently sits in the third place behind Google and Facebook in terms of advertising market share. So this is the reality of the war that we're currently facing because in the beginning it was all about advertising dollars where people could take their products and start advertising them online and Google and Facebook came out on top. They clearly won that war but then on the e-commerce side we had you know Shopify, we had Amazon and I mean Amazon has kind of been competing in a few other companies with like say Microsoft's cloud computing. They're all kind of playing in in their own little realms. But when we're talking about where they make their bread and butter, when it comes to Amazon purely e-commerce, and now what, they would, what they're doing is allowing you to advertise your products on their platform, giving you a higher ranking overall. It's kind of like when you go onto YouTube and you look something up and you see those top ranked videos that show up. And then above those videos, you kind of see the ads that on top. That is exactly what Amazon is trying to do in this competition. And heck, it's working out for them. I really quickly want to take a look at Google. And again, I don't think you can compare any of these in their own baskets because they own have their they all have their own unique qualities behind them but taking a look because Google's probably the most comparable Google's sitting on a cash position of a hundred billion dollars with a total current asset of 275 billion dollars minusing the 74 billion in liabilities I mean they're sitting on 200 billion in underlying assets with also arguably one of the best balance sheets on the S&P top 10 ladies and gentlemen why am I showing you this well I think you need exposure either to Google or Facebook I think you'd be dumb not to the way the world is going. And like I said, the only reason I'm not owning Google is because I have exposure to the income off of Google AdSense. And that is my exposure to Google is this YouTube channel. But if you have zero exposure to that income whatsoever, you need to tap into this in some way or another. In conclusion, I'm really glad I have some exposure to Facebook because I had that exposure through doubling my money in Tesla, which I pulled out my initial investment. I then threw it into Facebook. And now Facebook, I mean, is proving to work out pretty Pretty well. I feel like Tesla was my horseshoe for 2020. It was the main reason I am still sitting in the green on the year. And if I can make one solid bet, come back to this video in the next three years and tell me Facebook or Google was a bad investment. I just feel like I, I would honestly almost bet my life on that on that gamble. Obviously, that would be stupid, but 
Obviously, that would be stupid, but if we're talking about the easiest money to be made in the market today, it is amongst these companies, guys. So I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you I hope you learned something in this video that kind of was thought promote. I hope you learned something in this video that was thought provoking enough for you to kind of further deep dive into these companies and hopefully learning something that will itch you closer to being an investor. But let me know what you think in that comment section below. Slap a like, stay cool, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.